الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستكفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مدل له وما يدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون أولئك أصحاب الجنة خالدين فيها جزاء بما كانوا يعملون All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify Allah We thank our Creator for His blessings, His favors and His bounties upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah he is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran that we need to be believers and we need to be steadfast in terms of our belief. And when we are believers and we are steadfast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us tremendous rewards. You know, one of the things that, uh, uh, that you, you want in life is uh, that peacefulness, that tranquility, peace of mind. You want comfort. You, you don't want to be living in a state of fear and anxiety. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is promising the believers, those who say Allah is their Lord. He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقاموا. Those who say that Allah is their Lord and they are steadfast, فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ They will grieve, they will have no fear and they will grieve not. And even though this is referring to the time of death, we, we see that in the Qur'an and in the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we, we are being reminded that if you are believers, and you practice, you, you engage in dhikr, you engage in dua, you engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you find that peace of mind, that you find that tranquility, you find that comfort, and, and the fear is uh, taken away from you. So much so that you see in the, the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he says that the likeness of the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not remember Allah is like the living and the dead. So when you remember Allah, there is life. When you don't remember Him, it's like you don't have life. Allah tells us in the Quran, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatmayinnul qulub verily through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is comfort to the heart there is peace of mind there is tranquility and so even though here we are referring to the time of death we are being told several places in the Quran and in the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that those people who are closely attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to their faith, regards to their iman and with regards to their actions, their amal, that they will have comfort, they will have peace of mind, they will have tranquility. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ula'ika ashabul jannah. They are the companions of jannah, of paradise. Khalidina fiha. They will dwell therein forever. Jaza'an bima kanu ya'malun. That is because a reward for what they have done in this world, a reward for following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a reward for being obedient to Allah and being obedient to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, today, I just want to remind you and remind myself that if we were to look back at the last month, the month of Ramadan, we would see that what we were trying to acquire in terms of our taqwa, it was all about us being good people, people who behave well people who understand that this is what matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. Verily, the best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most God-fearing, the one who is most righteous, the one who is most pious. This is what life is all about. And so these uh, rituals that we go through in, in our lives, whether it is praying, whether it is fasting, it is the giving of charity, the performance of hajj, whatever it is, it is all so that we can demonstrate that good behavior within ourselves. And that is why we, we see that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Verily, I have been sent to perfect behavior. And so, if one does not behave well, it seems that something is wrong with that person's iman, that person's faith. If one prays and he does not behave well, something is wrong with his prayers. If one uh, you know, uh, fasts during the month of Ramadan and doesn't behave well, something is wrong with his fasting. Because we, we, when we look at all these pillars of Islam, it's all guiding us towards becoming better people in terms of our relationship with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talks about the, the completeness of a believer and he says, إِنَّ مِنْ أَكْمَلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَأَلْطَفُهُمْ بِأَهْلِهِمْ Verily, the most complete of believers in faith are those with the best character. The most complete of believers in faith are those with the best character and who are most kind to their families. So, if there is something with, wrong with regards to our characteristics, our morals, our behavior, it, it, it tells upon our Iman, something is wrong with our faith. Faith is not complete. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying to us. If we are not kind to our families, then something is wrong with our faith. Something is wrong with our Iman. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, what we have gained in the month of Ramadan with regards to you know, the taqwa, the piety, the righteousness, the God-fearingness, we need to demonstrate it 
every moment of our lives. We need to make sure that there is always that demonstration of good character within us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a beautiful hadith, man ahabba an yuzahzah anin nar wa yadukhul al jannah fal tudriku maniyatuhu wa huwa yu'min billah wal yawm al akhir wa yati ila al nas hibbu an yu'ta ilayhin the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever would love to be delivered from the hellfire and admitted into the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let him meet his end, that is when time comes for him to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let him be meeting that end with faith in Allah. Faith in Allah and the last day. And listen to the other part that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, and let him treat people as he would love to be treated. This is a problem that we face in the world today, where Everyone wants the best of treatment. Everyone wants to be comfortable. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants people to treat them in the best way. If you say, if, you know, if you speak to them, they want you to speak to them in the best way. If you interact with them, they want you to interact with them in the best way. But there are a lot of people who do not do likewise to others. We want it from others, but we don't give it back to others. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he is reminding us that if you want to be delivered, if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved from the hellfire, and you want to be admitted in the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, when death comes upon you, make sure that you are a person who has iman, who has faith in Allah and in the last day. And more importantly, that you spent your life treating people the way you would have liked to be treated that you spent your life treating people good because that's the way you want to be treated and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters part of our uh, our akhlaq our behavior is to make sure that we are always looking to see how we can make a difference in other people in the way that we treat them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us in another beautiful hadith, Kun wari'an takun abadan nas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Be devout and you will be the most pious of people. And then he says, Wakun Kwanian Takun Ashkaranas and be content and you will be the most grateful of people. You know, a lot of times, people do not value what they have. And they're always complaining. They're always looking for more. I don't have enough. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, be content with what you have. You will always be grateful 
to the one who has given it to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La in shakartum la azidannakum. Allah says in the Quran, if you are thankful, I will certainly increase you. You know, the nature of man is that we always look to the one who has more than us and we think that we haven't been given enough. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us, look at the one who has less than you and you will understand how blessed you are. And so you will always be thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا And if you were to try to count the bounties and the favors of Allah, you will never be able to count them. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when, when you think about, uh, you know, your parents, in the, and you may have lost one, think about those who have lost both. When you think about your resources, when you think about all the things that you have in life, think about other people and what they don't have in life. And you will always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Kun qani'an takun ashkaran nas. Be content and you will be the most grateful of people. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continues and he says, wa ahab, wa ah and love for people that which you love for yourself it will be a sign of your faith that you are a believer that you have faith what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says about faith and loving for people he says, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. None of you is a true believer until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. And so here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, love for people that which you love for yourself and you will be mu'min, you will be a believer. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he continues, Wa ahsin jiwar, jiwar man jawarak, takun musliman. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, behave well with your neighbors. Behave well with your neighbors and you will be a Muslim. You, you are a Muslim when your neighbor next door to you feels safe, feels secure. If you are a Muslim and your neighbor next door to you is dying of hunger, something is wrong with your Islam. The Prophet ﷺ, he tells us that. If you are Muslim and your neighbor does not feel safe, Something is wrong with your Islam. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that you be kind, you be kind to your neighbors, you behave well with them, and that would be a demonstration of your Islam, that you are a Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continues and he says, وَأَقِلْ and laugh less for too much laughter with, will deaden the heart and so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is saying to us uh, yes it's not that you have to be serious all the time but there are people who just focus on this dunya and do not focus on the hereafter. 
and they spend all their time just uh, enjoying life and forgetting that this life is temporary and the permanent life is when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and so it's all amusement and play it's all focus on enjoyment of this world and forgetting about the world hereafter my dear brothers and my dear sisters as we look at uh, akhlaq and, and, and behavior in, in how we interact with one another. Remember the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He tells us, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhumu rahman irhamu man fil ardi yarhamkum man fis sama. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the merciful will be shown mercy by the most merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala irhamu man fil ardi yarhamkum man fis sama be merciful unto those who are on the earth and the one in the heavens will show mercy unto you and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters we we live in a world where as you see the the actions of people with regards to others who may not share the same faith with them, whom they may discriminate against them because of many reasons. We see how they are being treated. If we, you know, every day we see our brothers and sisters, women, children in, in Gaza and the way that they are being treated, they are being treated as if they are not human beings. No, no rahma, no mercy, no compassion. And, and yet these people say they are the most moral army in the world. This, this is what we are experiencing every day of our lives. And, and so when you look at your brother, you look at your sister, when you look at your father, you look at your mother, your son, your daughter, when you look at your, 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 your siblings, when you look at your family members, your friends, just remember that if you are merciful unto people, that Allah will be merciful unto you. And always show that rahmah to people. Always be merciful unto one another. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us about the believer. In the, he tells us four things that you do not find in a believer. He says, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِالْتُعَانِ وَلَا اللَّعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِينِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the believer does not insult others. The believer does not curse others. The believer is not vulgar, and the believer is not shameless. And we need to search ourselves that if we are true believers in Allah, we need to make sure that these things are not, these qualities are not found within us. That we are not people who are up to insulting one another. You, you, you don't like something, there is a way of discussing. There is a way of handling matters. You, you, you are not people who curse one another. You know, today we find even among the believers that sons and daughters, they curse their mothers and fathers. They insult their mothers and fathers. And even mothers and fathers, they insult and curse their children. A believer is not vulgar. You know, be careful of this tongue. Let it be moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let it be moist with good things. Not to follow the practices of the people that we, you know, we interact with. You know, young people today, 
for every sentence, you can find so many, uh, yet so much vulgarity within it. And you know what I'm talking about in terms of the, the different letters that, is, that are being used. You see them writing, and even in their writing, in their text, you can find that vulgarity. A believer is not vulgar. Lam yakun Rasulullah fahishan wala mutafahishan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was never vulgar, nor he never listened to anything that that type of vulgarity. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam discouraged us, stay away from this. Even though you may not be the person who is cursing and insulting and speaking in that type of manner, do not listen to it. Do not be part of it. Because a believer is not part of that. We have shame. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, in lam tastahi fasna ma'ashit O kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam If you do not have shame, then do as you wish. And the people whom you see, the way that they behave today, in terms of, the, you know, insulting people, uh, being vulgar, the things that people do and that shows that they do not have shame, that's why the Prophet is saying, you know them, that they do not have shame because they will do whatever they want to do. So be careful, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. My simple reminder here today is that we, we follow up on what we say we believe in. What we have strived so hard for in the month of Ramadan in terms of taqwa, it needs to be a continuation in our lives all the time. And what really matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's our taqwa, our piety, our righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala. It is he, Allah, who created death and life so that he may test you to see which one of you is the best in conduct. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says of him in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And you are indeed of an exalted nature. We follow him, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in everything that we do in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to inculcate good behavior, good characteristics, good moral. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, keep us away from all evil actions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of the hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'mini al-minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfirun innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Ridwanullahi alayhi mila yawmiddin. Amma ba'd, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us not look at the resources that we have in life and make us proud and oppressive, you know, that we can do whatever we wish to do. You know, we, we, we have a, a nation today that because of what uh, the, 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 the backings that they have from the West, 
they think that they are powerful and they can do whatever they wish to do and they are accountable to no one. We always have to remember that we are accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that's what gives us some comfort that even though people may get away with it in this world, that they will not get away with it uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah will take them into account for the evils that they have done to others. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he reminds us of how we should behave with one another. He says, Inna Allah awha ilayya an tawada'u hatta la yabghiya ahadun ala ahadin wa la yafkhara ahadun ala ahadin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Verily Allah has revealed to me that you must be humble towards one another. Have that humility. Be humble unto one another. So that no one oppresses another or boasts to another. Humility, we have seen it last when it comes to so many people in the world today. And that is why, because there is not that humility, that humbleness, people tend to oppress others and to boast about what they have. Remember, what you have can be taken away anytime by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is not what you have in terms of resources, but it's, it, it, is, it's, it is what you have in terms of amal that matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Verily, Allah does not look at your appearance or your wealth, but Allah looks at your hearts and your deeds, your actions. That is what matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is kalbun salim, a pure heart, good deeds, and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah, that will earn us Jannah, the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to always be engaged in good deeds. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And that Allah saves us from the torment of the hellfire. Laqad amarna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Azim haythu qal إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المشرين بالجنة وعن سائر الصحابة ون التابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في غزة وفي فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم انصرهم اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي ذاكم لعلكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة